Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. Um, we, I'm just going to give um, people just a few more minutes to connect because I can see people connecting um, as I speak. So please bear with us and we will start our webinar today in, uh, the, within the next few minutes. Okay, so I can see a lot of people have joined, so uh, let's get started. So firstly, hello everyone, and um, thank you very much for joining us for today's Safety Care Leadership Series webinar, Supply Chain Solutions to China's Left Behind Children Problem. Um, very excited to be joined by almost 150 registered attendees from across Europe, America, and Asia, so a very warm welcome today to you, wherever you're dialing in from, um, and uh, we're really pleased that you can join us. So China's left behind children uh, continue to make the headlines and for good reasons. As we'll soon learn, there are millions of left behind children in China and these children who are left behind, these are children who are often left behind in rural communities whilst their parents move to large cities in search of work. And as we'll learn, this separation has really significant impacts on workers um, and their children, but also on the factories where they work as well. So we're holding today's webinar really as an opportunity for you to find out more about the scale and scope of uh, left behind children um, and associated issues in China. Um, understand why this issue is relevant as a supply chain um, issue and also learn more about the uh, successful pilot we ICT Care have been running at toy factories in China to support workers and their left behind children. Um, we'll also explain the two work streams which form part of this uh, pilot work that we've been, we've been delivering. Uh, these are family-friendly factory spaces and our migrant parents training session uh, program. Sorry, um, and also I'm really pleased to, that we'll be joined by two ICTI Care certified toy factories who are going to share their own experiences of participating in these two these two pilots. Um, we'll then share and reflect on the positive supply chain impacts that these pilots have delivered. For the, the toy supply chain workers and their children, but also uh, some of the associated business benefits uh, which, which, have, which have been experienced by toy factories too. And then finally, we'll explain how your brand can get involved and support the further expansion of our Left Behind Children program. So, I, so I'm Mark Robertson, Director of Communications and Stakeholder Relations at AT Care, and I'm delighted today to be joined by a great panel of other speakers too. Uh, with us is Ines Kampfer, who's Executive Director of CTR CSR, that, who are our, imp our implementation partner on our Left Behind Children work in China. And we're al we'll also be joined today by Eddie Young, who is Quality Assurance and Quality Control Director at Desktop Toy, Toy Factory, and also Tracy, Tracy Huang, who's Compliance Direct Department Manager at First Union Toy Factory. Um, we'll be speaking for about 45 minutes and then we'll leave some time at the end for questions. Um, your microphones are, are all muted, but you can ask a question at any point during our presentations using the text box, which you should see on the right hand side of your screens. Um, and we will answer these questions um, at the end of the presentation. Finally, before we begin, just to remind you that um, today's session is being recorded and the recording will be made available to you at the end of the session, just in case you or a colleague want to listen again. So a really quick introduction to us just before we, we, we go into the main presentation. Uh, for those that you don't know, ITI Care, we are the ethical toy supply chain pro ethical supply chain program for the global toy industry. We work with thousands of toy brands, retailers and suppliers and manufacturers around the world to drive ethical standards and deliver improvements in the toy supply chain. Our core focus or mission um, is all around delivering better lives for toy workers everywhere. And, and this underpins all that we do. Uh, we've been operating for almost a decade, and we're now uh, we currently work in 12 different countries, uh, representing uh, almost 700,000 workers. But a majority of our work is focused in China, which still really remains the world's leading country on toy manufacture. Okay, 
So now I'm going to hand you over to Innes from CTR CSR. Um, and Innes, if you can just start by quickly introducing yourself and then just begin by explaining more about uh, left behind children issues in China, just to help us understand, understand more about the issue. Sure. Um, good evening, everyone. Very happy to join this um, really exciting webinar. Um, so I'm Ines from S the Center for Child Rights and Corporate Social Responsibility. That's what the many C's stand for. And basically, very quickly, we are a social enterprise who work with um, companies or industry associations as ICTCARE to both understand the impact um, our businesses have on children and to ensure that this uh, is not a negative impact but on the other hand that we use um, the leverage business has to create um, opportunities and support for children's rights so that's kind of our mission so um, as, as Mark asked me to talk a little bit about the um, uh, the whole topic of left behind children um, as you can see on, on, on this slide um, there is an estimate and there's different numbers out there but there there is a fairly um, good estimate and that's been out there for a long time about, about 62 million children that are in one way or another separated from their um, parents who left their hometowns to go to work and of which many of them went to work into the manufacturing industry in the coastal areas of China and you can see from the little map um, with the many green people that number is about the same as the whole population of the UK now of the 62 million children about um, uh, half um, are um, at, at sometimes in their lives um, separate from from both of their parents. So both of their parents leave and they are left in the guardians of um, their uh, their grandparents or or other relatives. Um, you know of children who are sent to live with their teachers. There are certain um, schools who have dormitories for children who don't have anybody to um, to look after in, in rural areas. Um, and um, as you can imagine, this leaves a, a lasting impact on, on children's um, well-being. Um, we know from um, people we work with in other NGOs, for example, Save the Children, who work with the children in the villages, um, that we are dealing with situations of neglect. Obviously not everyone, there, there are some families who manage this, this situation very, very well, but we do have a great number um, that really suffers from that separation. Um, that they're enduring, often for very long periods of time. Great, thanks Ines. Um, and then can you just elaborate a little bit more on why this is relevant as a supply chain issue? Right, um, so we actually um, did a, 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 a research um, which I think is now about dates four years back which was a real eye-opener when we saw um, how much um, the migrant parent workers um, who work in our factories are impacted by that situation and I think something that we kind of knew but uh, not really were aware of before is that a great number of the workers um, in particular in the toy industry it's probably in most factories between 60 to 80 percent of of the workers who are migrant parents who have children and of those again the majority has left their children behind and it impacts parents in terms of their psychological well-being um, we know um, for many parents that they um, often don't sleep well or just uh, really suffer under that se uh, separation they suffer with guilt and we've seen that this actually impacts um, their work performance many say that they often can't concentrate very well or if they have issues at home they don't sleep well so they don't perform well the next day but also many said that they have left their workstation like for good at some point in, in their lives because they had to rush home for example because they were worried about their children um, and so just left the factory and, and didn't come back. Um, we've also seen particularly in the last two years and uh, in the, in, during the last um, summer that um, some parents or in general parents become more aware of the importance to spend more time with their children there's more information out there so many of the younger parents try to find ways to spend time with their children and bring them um, to the factories during the summer holiday um, but this has in the last summer we have seen um, led to a lot of compliance issues with children on the work floor and we've had a lot of um, clients calling us and coming to us with that issue and um, you see one of the pictures here where uh, I think it's a three-year-old is sitting next to his, his dad and while it's nice that they can spend time together obviously that's not really the solution and not a good um, uh, not, not a good place to be for children and 
um, if they're parents. So it is on top of that a, a compliance issue as well for many of the companies. Thanks, Ines. And just in terms of the children themselves, how I mean, how far away do the children often live from their parents? Um, and are, are parents often to visit their children who are, the, who are separated from frequently, or is it often a long period of time between reunions? I mean, um, the, a couple of years back, um, I think many children had like a very long periods of two, three years. Um, I think in the last years with the improved like great connection, etc., most children get to see their parents once a year. But um, still, that's once a year, often for just a couple of days. And um, well, many parents said out with the idea, oh, I'm going to go and do that for two, three years, and then I come back. This is in reality not happening very often. So many parents um, could continue working as um, uh, migrant parents in the coastal areas for, for years. And so basically miss the entire childhood of their children. And we do have then situations of very strange families who've actually never spend time together um, um, until their, their mm. kids become adults themselves. And then just, just quickly before we move on to the next section, why can't um, children move to be move to the city to be with their parents? What are the kind of just just briefly what are the issues that are preventing sure. that from happening? Yeah so obviously it's all related to the HUCO system. Um, so the the HUCO system, the system that gives certain rights only within the area where one has its um, origin and the origin of the children is for example not where they were born but where their parents have their or, um, place of origin. Um, so only their children can receive um, um, medical care, only their children are free medical care, only there they can uh, get access to education. Um, so for many parents bringing their children with them um, brings a lot of risk. So uh, potentially if they get sick, if they have an accident, it could uh, lead to huge costs. Um, they do not get access to public schooling. So there's a lot of um, obstacles. There is changes at the moment, um, but I think as a general we still can say, and I'm I'm not going to go into details now, but we, we still can say that for many migrant workers it's very complicated and a very tough decision to find solutions to bring their children with them in the long term and to kind of build a okay. family life in the places of work. Okay, thank you very much for that. That's a really useful overview. Okay, so on to uh, ICTI Care's Left Behind Children program. So why are we uh, looking at the issue? Um, so ICTI Care represents around 650 workers at toy factories in China and that number can actually rise to over a million workers during peak production months for toy production in, in, in the summer. Um, the majority of these workers in our program are domestic migrant workers and many are parents. And that means that for these parents at toy factories, a key challenge they face that affects their well-being is actually spending time with their children, as Innes has kind of outlined for us. Um, so that makes Left Behind Children very much a live issue for us and also for the toy industry supply chain. And of course, other supply chains involved in manufacturing in China. Um, we're increasingly at Ikki Care looking for opportunities to expand the scope of our program and really kind of start to invest in worker well-being projects which complement the audit and certification elements of the work that we do already. Um, children are a major stakeholder for the toy industry and as such really our focus is therefore on supporting workers, uh, so oh, sorry, I should say our focus on supporting workers with left behind children makes sense. It also strengthens the relationship between parents and children which really is why the toy industry exists in the first place. So it's a strategically very good fit for, for us but obviously the need is very pertinent too. Um, we also want to complement other work which is already underway in China to support left behind children as the government um, for kind of national and local increases their efforts to, to support uh, workers and, and their children. So our left behind children program then. Um, so this uh, last, last summer 2016, um, ICTICA therefore ran two pilot projects um, to uh, tackle the left behind children issue. And these were uh, creating family friendly factory spaces, um, FFFSs, <laughs> and also delivering migrant parent training sessions across toy factories in China as well. So both of these uh, programs were developed uh, with our implementation, uh, implementation partner, CCRC, CCRCSR, and really they, they aim to provide opportunities to migrate, to reunite migrant workers with their left behind children, but also to support uh, uh, parents with left behind children as well. 
So briefly, our Family Friendly Factories Spaces program, as I said, is all about creating safe spaces at factories for children to learn and play whilst their parents work. And the way it works is that selected staff at each toy factory are trained in the implementation and management of, of the spaces. And the suitable, suitable spaces on, are found on site, away from the factory floor, um, and these are transformed into safe, secure, and, and really colourful places for children to play safely in a safe and secure environment. Um, and during the spaces, during the spaces, um, we also provide uh, working with the factories, um, educational activities and other activities uh, for children. So the idea is that. Their children aren't just sat in a room um, away from the factory floor um, waiting to see their parents. You know that the, the actual spaces themselves are um, stimulating education, education environments for, for children to participate in. So uh, we saw in the initial pilot activities organised such as singing, dancing, drawing games, and all sorts of the fun stuff that kids got involved with. So we initially ran these pilots at two factories in China. Um, involving around about 90 parents and uh, benefiting about 85 children and we'll be hearing from those factories shortly. Um, so I won't go into too much detail now, but really the, the, the results of the, fund, the spaces were profound and we'll, we'll hear more about the impact. The second element of our uh, work has focused on delivering migrant parents training uh, sessions. And these sessions, again, delivered in partnership with CTR, C, CCR, sorry, CCR, CSR, um, really focus on uh, distance without separation. So the workshops provide a range of um, important support and, and support mechanism, mechanisms and tools which really are about improving and maintaining relationships between migrant workers and their children. So the sessions focus on things such as helping workers uh, have an increased sense of value as a parent and lead a happier and healthier life as a remote parent. Uh, also looking at things like understanding the rights and needs of, of, of their, cho their children at different ages for better communication uh, and support um, to help and helping the children in those areas. Um, they're also about um, helping parents develop better remote communication skills with their children and build, uh, cl build closer relationships. And also really um, recognizing signs of distress um, to support their children's growth and development ongoingly. We have found that, um, through feedback from um, our partner, that many conversations that um, workers have with their children are quite difficult. So these, uh, and building a bond remotely can be hard. So really the migrant parents training sessions are all about um, helping upskill workers in that regard. Um, we've gone further with these. So the, we ran initially 10, 10 pilots um, at 10 different factories in China, um, and we've actually reached over 3,000 workers with these two parents, the migrant workers session. And again, we'll hear more about those in a second from a, uh, one of the participating factories. So now I'm going to pass across to Eddie Young um, left, uh, from Besttop, who is going to share his experiences of um, participating in our family-friendly factory spaces pilot. So Eddie, over to you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Eddie Young working for Best Top Company. My position is quality director. I'm honored to share our experience on the happy summer holiday 2016. First of all, I would like to introduce our factory. Our factory located in Yingda City, Guangdong Province. Best Top was established in June 2007. We mainly produce PMM's toys for McDonald's and retail toys for Disney. Our company is 100% owned by Mr. Yun Hoi Ling, who comes from Qingyun City and has engaged in toy manufacturing since 1990. Mr. Yun forecasted that the Pearl River Delta region who faced the labor shortage and raising costs, and therefore moved the production base back to his hometown in 2001, establishing four IDCI care certified factories. One of these factories is best top with more than 3,000 employees. The story behind our participation in family family factory space, why did best top join the program? 
Their lack of news coverage continues to highlight the problem that left behind children face, including suicide, crimes, emotional distress, and so on. Two years ago, our company management allowed the staff to bring in their children to live together with them at the factory during the summer holiday. However, one NGO incorrectly identified the children as child labor. ICTI Care understood the real situation and cooperated with Best Top Company to organize the first happy summer holiday at our factory to create a safe, secure, and happy space for children on site. So we show that many children look forward to spending their winter or summer holiday with their parents in order to meet the wish of children, reduce the worries of parents, and to help retain workers. Best Talk successfully held the first happy summer holiday in 2016 under the guidance of ICTI care and with the assistance of CCRO and CSRO. How did we select workers to participate in this program? We originally intended to select 30 children for this program, but after promotion in the factory, we received more than 400 children's application. Limited by space, we finally decided to prioritize the children who can see their parents only one or two times a year, and also taking into account distance. We finally selected 55 children. Next point, we're going to talk about the program has delivered many benefits for workers and the children. Children before joining the program, some children are too shy to say hello to others. Some children are not able to speak Mandarin Chinese. Some children are not well fed. Some children did not develop good living habits. Some children are not willing to communicate with their parents. Some children are don't know how to express themselves. After joining the program, we found amazing results. Children more outgoing and welcoming to play games as a team. Children are able to learn to communicate in Mandarin Chinese. Children are well fed and have a positive attitude. Children we taught it was to wash their hands before eating. Children willing to communicate with their parents about their feeling more openly. Children become versatile and good at singing, dancing and performing. After we talked to the worker and children, how the factory can benefit from this program. The Left Behind Children program brought the following benefit to our factory. A fast and effective way to improve employer satisfaction and establish a good factory reputation. Local government has provided positive feedbacks on the result of the program. Thus, they are 100% supportive in promoting this program to other factories. And for the workers, working parents don't have to worry about their children, and in turn, they can focus on the jobs. The result is the factory has improved their production efficiency dramatically. This is one of our ways to establish a harmonious and happy factory culture and to build a more human company. The next point we are going to talk how to roll out the program. We're setting up the Left Behind Children program in what the borings. We divided into two sections. The first session, involvement and support from top management. Adapts the team and designated person in charge lead by the general manager and assisted by the top of conduct team. High fee full-time professional teachers with certificate 
and daycare experience. Arrange five part-time teachers from different departments of the factory. The second section in more details. In here, we separate it in four categories. Number one, parents. Enter for the project 30 days in advance before the program starts. Sign the agreement regarding the rights and application of parents, graduates, and children. Number two, children. Of course, the priority is safety. That's we must purchase children insurance to provide protection for the children and reduce the risk of graduates. They are short term and free insurance. Number three, teachers. Select a full. As mentioned above, our teachers are certified and more than qualified to teach and manage the children. Number four, resource. Confirm the resource. Provide uniform for children to clearly recognize and prevent them entering the production areas. Have the photos about the activities for last year from preparation to execution. The next slide has some training for part time teacher and assistant. They are taking CCRO, CSRO professional training. The next slide. They are welcome similarly to the children and teachers understand and be familiar with each other to understand the basic situation and discipline. The next slide, there are some activities for the children. For example, the tutorial, funny games, Singing and dancing, storytelling, assembling the toys. The next slide we show the outdoor family activities with the parents, such as the barbecue, planting flowers. Are you still there, Eddie? Sorry. Yeah, the next slide, the next slide is a farewell ceremony to show the children have learned in this period of time with the parents and management. Finally, I hope this presentation has given you the insights from this wonderful program that benefits all parties, both factory and workers. Not only it can boost the production capacity and quality, but the most important is that we have created a better working environment for our workers and more homeless relationship towards each other. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Eddie. That's, that's great to, uh, to hear more about your factory's um, participation um, in in the family friendly touch spaces. So thank you so much for that. We're now going to go across to Tracy Huang from First Union uh, Toy Factory, who's going to tell us a bit more about her factory's participation in the uh, migrant parents training session. So Tracy, over to you. Okay. So uh, hello everyone. My name is Tracy Wong. I am in compliance department. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Molly and ICTI Care Organization recommended for us with the Migrate Parents Training. I'm going to introduce our factory, First Union. It locates at Dongguang City, Guangdong Province, China, which is an OEM factory. The plan is established in 1989, has 28 years of history. Our main customers are Mattel and Speedmaster. Most of products focus on electron RC card and 
aircraft and deco action figure. Our brand service for famous brands of European and American markets. And currently is upgrading the transformation to fully enhance the level of automation, reduce the manpower, improve product quality, and production efficiency. Our factory has approximately 4,000 employees. Inside, there are more than 2,000 migrant workers in our factory and about 15%. We want to uh, participate in the migrant parents training program because we believe that MPT can help our factory increase the level of care for our employees. It helps us to better support migrant parents to effectively communicate with their left behind children. We believe that MPT program has many benefits for our workers. It helps it has helped to upgrade our corporate culture and create a sense of belonging uh, among us employees. So the next point will be um, our first training session was arranged from December 28 to December 30, before Chinese New Year. This is because of, of our factory will take vacation about two weeks during the spring festival. And most of the parents work outside may go back to reunite with their children, celebrating for several months. We select a group of uh, employees with children under the age of 18 years old to participate in the migrant parents training programs. Of course, we expect the uh, professional training with ITCI uh, care organization team to change families' lists of our employees. Uh, so uh, after the holiday, uh, the workers return to their own position. We have arranged return visit with MPT trainees as we ask about their holiday time with their children. Saw the joy and happiness on their face. One of the trainees from the spring painting department said, after joining this pro, uh, training, I know how to get along with my kids. Although I am a mother for many years, I never thought to be friends with my children. Always think they are still young on, and not sen sensible. Right now, I would like to communicate and share more interesting things with my kids. Listen and respect my children's idea or options and become a happy and harmonious family. Uh, the second uh, response from the temple painting department she said, after training, the communication with the children is a lot better. The children are really growing up and are beginning to share their mother's interests and become more sen sensible. So uh, next point, I will uh, going to uh, talk about the positive uh, business, uh, business benefits. Our factory also have has positive results from the MPT. The rate of employees returning to work at the factory increased from 17 in 2016 to 83% uh, percent in uh, 2017. At the same time, uh, this helped to solve the employment problems after the spring festival and improve the output of factory. I think the migrant uh, parents training program increased worker as a satisfaction and greater trust and improve our corporate culture. So uh, the next point is uh, our challenge. Um, there are some uh, obstacles in selecting line workers because of production tests 
but with the support of factory management. And all were active and attentive. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's just a mistake. Uh, pop uh, production test. But uh, with the support of factory uh, management, we invite some uh, Margaret parents and the director uh, each from each department to join in the training. And they they all were active and atten attentive. Um, so uh, em employees are most concerned about family issues. They choose to work because they want to change lives of their children. At the same time, they also most worry about their children because of not living with them for long periods of time. With the help of professional CCR, CSR, and ITCI care teams, the MPT uh, sessions have helped employees to solve their worries and make employees more comfortable at work. This is what we want. So uh, the last point is um, just one question. Would you change your own shortcomings? It is difficult. So uh, we need the help of a professional team to carry out the effective communication in the growth process of children. Share the fun of life, common uh, progress for our happy families. Migrate parents training is conductive for the healthy growing of employees' family and corporate business, and it can promote the social harmony. MPT is a meaningful public welfare activities. It is uh, worth promo promoting. This is why I would, I would like to share this information with other factory, my friends, or all uh, colleagues and encourage all of them to participate uh, in this program. So uh, overall, uh, the outcome of migrant parents say we have a larger rate of discussion with children and choose more uh, and more to talk about. Our children feel closer. Uh, this is my uh, presentation. Thank you, everyone. Fantastic, Tracy. Thanks so much for sharing your insights there on your factory's participation in the training sessions. And I, I can see questions coming in on that, so we'll look forward to getting to those soon. So now I'm um, just back across to Innes, who's going to just quickly run us through some uh, an overview of some of the positive benefit, benefits and impacts we've seen from um, from these initial pilots. So Innes, over to you. Yes. Um, well, I, I think we've already um, also heard some fantastic stories and I'm really impressed um, by the presentations of both factories, although we've kind of been there. Um, it's still very nice to hear what a fantastic work uh, they have done and how they implement those programs. Um, so, and we've really seen, um, we actually, when we do those programs, really measure baselines and impact so that we have a good sense of what is the change that we're triggering in factories. And I think as we, as we could hear through those presentations from um, from Eddie and Tracy, um, there's really positive um, impact both on workers, children, and the factories themselves. And um, I mean, overall, we've seen happier workers, less distracted, the better relationships, um, children that have increased confidence, um, but also real changes to the factories and relationship. And um, we've got a couple of slides um, with a bit of data, just some sample sample data. So. Um, if you look at, at the workers, um, one of the things that we've seen early on that many parents really feel very guilty about that situation. So they, they do leave their families because of their families, because they want to support them, um, but also at the same time feel that they are insufficient parents and, and this guilt is very hard for them to deal with. So one of the things the training does um, that Tracy was talking about is really addressing that, that issue and actually encouraging parents in the sense 
to say like, look, you made that decision with, with the best interest of your family in mind, so don't beat yourself up about it, um, but just accept it as it is for now, as long as you can't change it, and, and don't think you've made a mistake, but know that you did it with the best interest in mind. And just that change, we can see, brings a lot, and you can see the difference um, before and after the training. So before the training, um, the pre, the, the orange, um, we had 58% of parents who said they strongly agree with the sentiment that they feel very guilty. Um, whereas at the end of the training, the, the number is much less, and many this, this strongly disagree. So they actually, through the training, um, really learn to kind of rationalize a little bit their decision and probably take a step back and say, there's no use um, for me to, to uh, beat myself up about it. And then on the other hand, they get more confidence that they actually can play a role in their children's lives. And again, we've seen parents that say, okay, I'm, I'm gone, there's nothing I can do anyways, and so there's, there's no way I can help my children, support my children. And um, I think in the training through a lot of methodology and, and case studies and practice, we actually showed in that can change. And um, this post data is, is um, also taken like a couple of weeks after the training, so when parents have the opportunity to really use the new uh, communication skills, for example, how to talk on a phone, um, and and then we get that feedback, and so we can see that um, the feedback is really very very positive, and sees uh, the changes that are happening within um, the parents and their relationship. Um, we also um, have the positive impact on children. Um, many children. Um, um, in, in uh, focus group discussions and, and kind of games that we do with children to just kind of see how they feel about those programs um, give us um, very positive feedback. Um, for many this year, I think in, in Unilis factories, that has been basically the best summer, the best time of their lives. Um, they enjoyed all the activities, but also we could see, as, as was said, so many changes. and. Um, really talking about how much fun it is. And um, at the same time, parents really talk to us about the changes that their children are going through um, and kind of children discovering things like dancing class, which sounds probably fairly ordinary, but for many children, this is the first time they do those kind of activities because they've never gotten access to after school activities and singing and dancing before. Um, then um, we've obviously also always look at what this means for the for the ma um, factory management, and and I think um, obviously in all this kind of human arguments and why these programs are really effective and impactful, we can actually see that it does have a strong impact on how workers perceive their factories. Um, we we saw in in this one factory where the data here is from that. Um, um, we had a clear increase in the number of workers who said they're planning to stay in the factories um, for two years or more. And so for those, um, so at the beginning this, this number was already, it's, it's a good factory, so the number was already very high, it was already close to 60%. Um, at the end of the program, 100% of the participants of the program, so the direct beneficiaries, said, yes, I, I'm going to stay you know, in this factory for at least two years. Um, but we've also seen an increase in the overall workforce, which I think is quite remarkable, because the, I think kind of the, the atmosphere and the spirit has really lapped over into the factory um, and kind of got, had a very positive messaging to the workers, even if they themselves were not benefit, benefiting uh, directly from from the program at, at this time. Um, and and similarly, we have similar results in terms of um, increasing trust to management, because I think the sense of well, management considers my challenges and my struggles in my life, and they do something about it has a really big impact. So a, a very remarkable kind of positive impact for the factories that is also expressed by many of the general managers that we've talked to. Um, and then we, we do also, I think lastly, we do feel that this can have a very positive um, impact on the brands. Do you want to go to the next slide? I don't know if you already have that one um, up running. But so, um, because um, what we see is that for, for one, I mean a lot of times we, we all engage in in um, social compliance and sustainability work and it's not always easy to 
to track how much impact we actually have on workers' lives and whether um, we actually really improve the lives of workers. And I think what is really interesting with, with these programs is that we can see there is a real impact here. There is no delay of many years. The, the impact is, is quite, there's quite a short, short-term reward for this program because people really talk about how much, um, uh, what a positive change um, these programs made to their lives. Um, we've also, um, as we said, we've seen that we improve factory performance and supplier performance as such. Um, if we have some more stable workforce, we have higher quality, we have more productivity, etc. And we do think it gives brands an opportunity for very strong messaging. And just as an example, I, I put in a screen, screen print from a, um, a study that uh, recently was um, published by the Global Child Forum on how much companies care about um, child rights. This was particularly a focus on northern companies and um, I think this is just an example where they then mentioned a couple of um, companies, some of those um, that in consumer goods you can see for example Quassels and um, who is also one of the companies engaging in those um, child friendly spaces um, and thus got a good rating and it's really kind of um, being considered by consumer organizations or um, uh, other stakeholders to see like what is you know what are brands doing to support their workers and and the children and that they're impacting directly or indirectly through their businesses so I think a very good opportunity for strong messaging as well great thanks so much for that Ines that's, that's um, a really good kind of overview of, of, of impact so thank you for that so uh, to, to ready to kind of start to round up, we've seen our experience of the uh, Left Behind Children work that we've done so far has been extremely positive. I mean, it's had a really, really positive benefit on for the workers who are, who are involved, um, but also for certainly for their children as well. But we've seen some really exciting um, benefits for factories too, um, as just described by Ines. So improvements in trust, commitment, even recruitment and retention. Um, and of course, there are um, associated uh, benefits for brands in um, getting involved with this work as well. So, um, the, so our, our initial pilots were supported um, by, in part via our committed Educares Committee Brand Plus members, um, whose contributions um, supported our initial Left Behind Children work in 2016. But given all the exciting kind of benefits and impacts that our work had to date. We're really keen to scale up this work now and um, kind of reach many more thousands of workers and uh, certainly many more factories in China as well. Um, so with that in mind, um, we have quite ambitious plans to, uh, to, to kind of take this work forward and really start to scale up uh, next year, sorry, this year and beyond. So we are asking uh, brands and uh, retailers really to uh, get involved um, find out more about um, the Left Behind Children program, potentially nominate factories um, from their own supply chain to, um, to participate in the program. But specifically, we are uh, looking for um, or inviting brands to consider funding the further expansion of this program as we, as we look to scale up. And really, this extra funding um, would enable us to uh, provide the additional in factory support that's, that, that we need really to kind of run more programs. So both the factory friendly, friendly uh, spaces, but also the migrant parent training sessions as well. So more of them benefiting more workers at more factories. Um, but what we also want to do is uh, develop guidance materials and templates, if you like, that will enable other toy factories to implement their own um, factory friendly spaces and run their own training sessions with, with if you like, less less uh, with more minimal support from us um, so we really want to learn from our existing pilots uh, and, and, and and use that apply that learning to help many many more factories to participate in the program so towards the, as the as we conclude the webinar at the end of the Q&A session we'll be sharing more details of handouts um, on on the program we really do encourage you to review those and invite you to consider supporting this work um, we're delighted that some brands already have so we have got some sponsors on board already for 2017 but we'd be very excited if other brands considered uh, joining us okay great well that rounds up the uh, presentation side of things but we're now going to um, go back to some of the many questions I see that have been coming in. And I'm actually going to hand across to my uh, colleague, Tom Van Haren. He's going to run the questions, questions and answer section for us. So Tom, over to, over to you. 
Thanks, Mark. Uh, yes, uh, so everyone, you can still submit some questions down on the, on the right-hand side, but uh, we'll start with one here um, for Ennis, um, I guess, in terms of the, the uh, family-friendly factory spaces. Um, for the parents, uh, are there any fees or, or how are things covered in terms of the children's meals, any uniforms? Uh, we see them wearing uh, similar t-shirts. Um, you know, what have you been, uh, what has been the process for the program and the best practices there? So with the factories that we're working with, we obviously always, when we set this up, uh, discuss those, those questions. Um, to my, or in our experience with um, all the child-friendly uh, child spaces that we run, um, um, most of the factories cover all the costs. Um, I've heard of, I think we had last year, um, um, one or two factories who uh, had parents contribute to the to the meals, um, and in some in I think one case where the parents were actually asked to prepare lunch boxes, but other than that, um, um, most factories have not asked um, for for parents to contribute. And actually, the other way around, we know factories who, for example, supported parents when they had to go home to pick up their kids to bring them back, and they supported them for the travel. Um, so, in our experience, factories have been very supportive and really didn't want to make kind of the money a, 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 a hurdle for, for parents to participate. Um, but, I mean, if, if Eddie has any other, uh, other experiences, but that's what I've seen. Um, Thanks. Eddie, do you have uh, anything for that or uh, in terms yeah. of your experience? Uh, our experience? Uh, okay. Uh, we pay the children and the family for all the, the expense, so that's okay uh, for the factory. I think uh, they are happy as a worker, as a happy, and uh, we have a benefit to both workers and our factory. So, yeah. Great. Uh, Mark, this might be a question for you um, as well. Uh, perhaps, Inish, you can also chime in. Um, so uh, the question is, uh, while these are all very interesting solutions to help uh, tackling the migrant workers' distance problem, uh, what do you think can be done to reunite migrant workers and their children in the long run? Um, I think, well, I mean, obviously the work that we're doing um, really is, is supporting kind of, it, it's, provide, it's meeting a kind of short-term aim, but that what we really want to do is make sure that the programs we run in factories are, are sustainable. So. Um, and that's where, to be honest, where additional funding will, will, will help. So the idea is that with, with both of the, 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 the training sessions and the family-friendly spaces, uh, we don't want it to be one-offs. We want the factories that we work with um, to make, uh, you know, kind of longer-term investments, um, run these programs year on year. So provide that opportunity um, to workers on an ongoing basis. But I think in, in the longer, longer term, um, we're talking more about um, structural changes which are already underway in China that will make it perhaps easier um, for, uh, for workers and their children to, to move together to cities. But I think we're quite a long way off. So in the, in the short term, really, uh, we need to invest in, in, in kind of in factory support to, to enable that. And if, if I can add to, to this, um, I, I think that's exactly right. And I, I, I mean, I, I do think there's structural changes that will um, actually make more families move as families over the years. Um, I think it's starting. Um, and I think with those um, activities such as factory child friendly spaces, we're slowly preparing also factories to react to that because factories originally have not been built as places where people come and live with their families. They're, they're often built in industrial zones and we assume these are uh, kind of single or maybe married people but they come without their families and they potentially go back after a couple of years so there's no, no sense of um, creating communities and that, that's potentially uh, something that can change over years and we've actually seen um, in, in our experience with some of the factories that have started with child friendly spaces earlier where this now has become year-round offers so for after school um, so they're um, in a couple of factories they call them um, 430 schools it's, they're not actually schools but it's just after school children can go there they can go there on Saturday so it becomes a year-long offer for, um, for workers and so it um, gives the opportunity for more and more workers to actually relocate together with their families.
And just to very quickly add to that, the, the migrant parents training sessions and the, the spaces really are designed to be complementary. So recognizing that um, once parents, once, yeah. sorry, once children have moved back home, um, they, they are designed to, that, that, that's where the, um, the training sessions come in really to kind of provide the additional support and, and ease the separation as and when it does exist. Great, thanks. Uh, and following up on the migrant parent training, we had a couple of related to that. Um, just sort of a general question in terms of what the content of the training was and, and what, uh, what uh, the parents got in, you know, what, what they found to be the more exciting parts of that. Uh, and then also in terms of the impact, um, how the survey responses um, uh, are, are being measured uh, in order to measure that impact and any sort of uh, long-term collection plans beyond uh, sort of when the, uh, when the parent leaves the factory. So I guess, Ines, that might be for you to start, uh, and then Tracy, if you have anything to add uh, in terms of what you saw uh, during your training sessions. Um, so, so, like, okay, go ahead. Go, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, Tracy, go first, please. Oh, so, like, uh, during the, like, training, like, uh, one of the, like, the, the, the teacher, like, uh, asked the question, like, to the, uh, Cheney, say like how many hours will you spend with your children and uh, do you understand your child like when uh, when the teacher asked these two questions like uh, the Cheney start feeling guilty and even I saw like some uh, workers start uh, like uh, crying like that kind of stuff yeah because I, I feel so sad about like that, yeah, that's uh, what I feel like. Thanks, Tracy. Uh, Ines, uh, in terms of the war on the, the content and, and I guess yeah. impact measurement and uh, mm -hmm. I guess also building on that in terms of the uh, guilt and anxiety, mm -hmm. um, uh, how that's, uh, how we might uh, be addressing those issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the content, it's, it's built in a, in a one-day, uh, I mean, it's a one-day training course or a half-a-day training course, depending on, on the program, but we often start with, and it can often at the beginning also get, get very emotional because we we starting to talk about things that many of the workers also kind of push aside. So the, the first section of is, is or is about um, the, the feelings of guilt and, and kind of um, having workers um, acknowledge their decision but also understanding that for example their own well-being is crucial so we have this all full sessions on their own well-being then it goes into a session about um, understanding the needs of children um, and kind of also understanding for example what can be expected in diff different development phase and what is it children need from from adults and from parents and then um, coming out of that a very practical guidance on communications and tools so we do um, uh, role plays on how to have a phone call but also then very practical things of um, and for ex it depends a little bit on the timing of the training, how much we emphasize that, but something is like when they just come back and you know, now you just spend a week with your children, so how can you kind of keep up the momentum? Or if it's uh, more towards or uh, a national holiday where they might go back, we really say, well, how can you prepare for that? How can you best use your time when you're there? But also how can you prepare yourself and the child for the separation that comes after the time together? So it, uh, it ends with some very practical tools. Um, and um, just to mention that with, with, with the program, there is also um, workers then can sign up to a WeChat platform that gives them ongoing kind of inputs and ongoing inspiration on those topics. So with that, we're trying to make sure that this is not just a one day input, but that those who um, want to can continue. Um, and we do measure impact. It depends a little bit on the program, but now if the, uh, within the ICTI care program, um, in many factories we did baseline surveys and interviews and focus group discussions with workers, and we then do this again um, a certain time after after the training. And the surveys really go to so we're not only asking the people who have been in the training or who have been benefiting directly, but we really try to measure kind of the atmosphere within the factory through those representative surveys um, and we also encourage factories themselves to really continue um, collecting their data in terms of turnover etc to see how this develops and we have factories and data um, 
um, where we can see over a, a span, um, we had, for example, one factory that over a span of two years managed to get their turnover rate down to 3%, um, and they think um, themselves the trigger really was their child-friendly um, activities. Um, first, the summer camps, they then made it a, a, a year-long program, and so through that, um, kind of collecting of KPIs could uh, measure the impact. Great, and I think we've got time for one last question. Um, this is for you, Mark. Uh, in terms of brand support, um, you know, how important is it that uh, the brands in, uh, are involved in ensuring that suppliers that they may nominate get involved uh, with uh, either a family-friendly factory space or the migrant parent training? I, I, I mean, it, it, it's it's certainly very helpful. Um, the, uh, the the way in which the program, in terms of the commitment to the program going forward, it's something it's very much a, a kind of it's an integral part of um, of certainly the work that we'll be continuing to uh, move forward with. Um, the, the, we see we've seen the biggest impacts um, when um, when you know when all supply chain partners are involved. So of course that's ourselves working with directly with the factories. Um, but also with the brands as well. Um, and from a brand's perspective, I get the, the support we're looking for certainly is for them to help us identify or, or potentially even nominate factories from within their own supply chain um, that they think would be good um, good to include within the program. But of course, but also um, through helping to promote the, the program more widely, and indeed, as, as we said earlier, um, potentially uh, partnering with us to kind of actually support or potentially fund different aspects of the pro of this work as well. So I think, yeah, I think th th this program has been really at its most effective so far when we've, we've, we've involved the participation of, of all the different stakeholders and brought them together. Um, I think the more we do that, the more we can really uh, move beyond these really initial great first steps and, and start to kind of scale up even further. Great. That's uh, that's uh, all the questions we've got for now. Um, if we couldn't get to it, uh, we'll we'll follow up uh, individually. But Mark, over back to you. Thanks so much for that, Tom. So thank you so much to uh, everyone for dialing in uh, today. Uh, we do hope you kind of found uh, the session this, this morning or afternoon, wherever you are, um, useful and helpful. Um, we'll be following up with um, various handouts, which we urge you to look at, which explain a lot more about the program, how it works, and the impact we've talked about today. Um, we'll also be uh, sending you a quick poll, which would be very grateful if you could respond to as well. And really, just to say thank you so much to Ennis, but and also our two factory speakers as well. It's been thank you not only for your uh, sharing today, which has been incredibly interesting and, and so interesting to hear about the impacts and benefits from your side, but also for your participation and commitment to um, uh, the, the pilots that we've run. Um, we're very grateful for that and your commitment um, I think has really helped to, to contribute to the success. So thanks again everyone. Um, it's been uh, great to have your participation today and um, we do urge you, as I said, to um, look at the follow-up details that we'll be sending and do please feel free to uh, get in contact with myself or other members of the ET Care team um, should you have any follow-up questions. So thanks very much again and uh, we hope to speak to you again soon. Thanks very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks everyone. Thank you.